All right, so welcome to the first episode, kind of the first episode of uh, Rat Salad Review. My name is Wayne. That is Greg. How do you, uh... yeah, never mind. And uh, we're supposed to have two other people with us, but um, one of them had to go do a fishing trip last minute. No, it wasn't last minute, but uh, it's got a fish. It's more important than doing this, I guess, right? No. <laughs> he makes a lot of money doing fishing. Yeah, I know. If he, he gets anything, if he actually catches things. And uh, the other guy, he didn't listen to the album yet, uh, Alice in Chains, which was supposed to be our first review. So um, we pushed the show till next week. But uh, Greg wanted to do the show tonight and asked what I wanted to do. And I said, Halloween Keepers 1 and 2. I said it as a joke because uh, <laughs> I figured you wouldn't want to do that. No, nope, because I don't like power metal. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you said yes, all right. So that's what we're going to do. Where should we begin? Uh, you want to start with part one? Oh, well, yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> all right, part one. Well, uh, if you want to give any history or anything like that, because I don't know jack about it, but. I liked it. <laughs> All right, good. You liked it. Great. So did I. Part two. No, um, any history? I really don't know any history. Well, the only, I guess, history is, is the first uh, first album of theirs with uh, Michael Kiske, which I just found out. I thought his name was Michael Kiske. But it's so listening. did I. Yeah, I was finding an inter uh, listening to an interview the other day, and it's actually Kiske. Huh. So okay. that's kind of cool. But anyway, uh, yes, yeah, his first album. And um, that's basically it. They changed their style from the from the walls of Jericho. They were more um, what like a thrash, right? Yeah, they're more yeah, thrash. They were thrash yeah, yeah. And then they moved into uh, power metal. Actually, I, they they're kind of like what the uh, I guess the innovators of power metal. Basically, I would imagine, right? I mean, you had Iron Maiden, but they weren't really fast like uh, Halloween is. No, different playing styles. Right. I mean, there, there, there's definitely a uh, maiden feel to it. Like you can tell, they were influenced by them, but right. uh, they make it their own. Right. Yeah, they took what maiden did, and then you know, made it their own, made it faster, made it just crazy. So, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, kind of like Megadeth doing a maiden cover, but not as angry or right. something, and better uh, vocals. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I will say that his uh, his vocals did get to me a little bit at points, but uh, really, mm -hmm. why is that? Uh, just a little shrieky, I guess. You don't like the power metal vo vocals at all, or I do some of them. I mean, he uh, Kiske isn't bad, but. Yeah. Um, just when he would hit high notes on a couple so eh, just piercing almost i don't know really almost like he was out of tune yeah oh my god then I, I, I was listening to it on my phone too at work so mm -hmm. i i, I want to listen to it again on my headphones because i feel like i didn't get the full experience you know it could have just been cracking up like that because i had a shitty internet connection at the time oh yeah that could be too also the phone speakers suck too so yeah that's like uh when i got into king diamond his his vocals are really out there and you really yeah. gotta get, you gotta listen to that a lot to get used to uh that style of vocals and when when i first listened to him i was like eh, i like the music a lot but the vocals you know i wasn't into that at all <laughs> neither uh neither was anybody else i hung out with other really? than my older friends, when I first discovered Merciful Fate, everybody hated it. Yeah. Uh, my best friend at the time, we were like 15, and he was like, dude, that, that sucks. It sounds like Elmo on Coke. <laughs> oh, man, man, was I upset at the time. But <laughs> but it's true, you know. It's it's something that's – you got to get used to that, you know. Yeah. And I, I wasn't too much like that with Halloween, though. I just, I like that kind of uh, those those vocals, and I that was the first time I heard music actually that fast. I that was I didn't get into Halloween till like uh, 
91, 92 ish. So I didn't get into them until like, uh, you know, they were like already on a break. That's when they had right. all that, the trouble with the record label and all that stuff. So, uh, okay. my friend started me off with keepers too. And then listen to that. I, I was heavy into uh Def Leppard and, uh, Metallica at the time. And my friend's like, stop listening to Metallica and listen to this. And I listened to Halloween and, and I'm like, holy crap, this is like the best thing I've ever heard in my life. Every song was fast. Every song, you know, every song was fast, but, you know, faster than like Metallica stuff. Things were, I don't know, just like, you know, Metallica songs kind of like drag on, you know, and Halloween stuff yeah. didn't drag on at all, you know. Yeah, yeah and that's going. Definitely, you know, um, it's, um, if I if I were to use two bands to kind of describe the feel of it, uh, it's a little bit like Rush with Iron Maiden. Right. Like, yeah. you know, the, the songs are longer, but uh, they jam. They don't just play the same riff constantly for seven right. minutes. Right, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of bands like to do. Mm-hmm. Yep, there's plenty of those. Well, I like those bands too, so. I like yeah. some of them. Yeah. You can't help I it. I mean, like Ride them. the Lightning's a great record. It is. I love that record. I love all Get the Metallica all. records until, until, until it got to St. Anger. I actually load and reload. But then saying anger was like terrible, and then uh, you know. It yeah, is- I, I threw got, reload I out the car window. You've heard that story before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I wanted to when I first heard it, but yeah, it is what it is now. But uh, yeah, getting back to Keeper of the Seven Keys, um, I'm Alive is the first song. Great opening. Yeah, tracks. yeah, yeah. I love, I love even the even the um, the intro to the, to I'm Alive. That's the first time like I ever heard something a band do something like that too. Like I never heard bands do intros to albums before. It was kind of right. like you know, like kind of like a movie kind of thing, you know. Yeah, no, that's a good way to describe it. Yeah, and, um, and that's a because I do remember Walls of Jericho a little bit and what they sounded like before. And uh, well, I love that song Halloween. I've heard that more recently. Oh yeah. Just, on Halloween, but, yeah. You know the way the album starts off with the intro and everything—it's just so uh, so energized, so yeah. uh, groundbreaking for them almost because they're changing their style and they're just really behind it and in tune with each other. It's just re- uh, bombastic, but not in a bad way. It's a great start to an album, right? Yeah, definitely. Very catchy. I'm alive. The chorus is very catchy. Oh, it's a feel-good song too. I love that song. Um, what's the the next song? I'm trying to do this off the top of my head. Uh, uh, a little time. A little time. Yeah, I can actually. Let me. I can go grab the CD. Oh no! Wait, can I? I can. I got my iTunes up right here. Uh, yeah, a little time and Twilight of the Gods. I got them right here. See, I got them right there. Ah, awesome. A little time. Yep, a little time is next. I like that song too. That's a good song. I uh I honestly prefer the live version on that I Want Out Live. I was gonna say, yes, I think that one's way better, actually. Way better than the album version. <laughs> I, a lot of the a lot of the songs on that uh on that live album are actually better, I think. It, the sound's better. Oh yeah. And um, just, just the way they played the songs differently a little bit, it's just it's just got a cool sound to that whole out that live album. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, and also the way, uh, like in in the little time where they do that little breakdown thing on the live album, they're still playing that uh, that part that's you know that's silent on the album. Oh, yes. And they're doing like that little jam through that part. That's kind of cool too. Yeah, that is. That's why I love live albums. You get to yeah. hear different stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. But um, yeah, it is a good track. You know, it's the second song. It's um, you know, it's got. It's not a fast song. It's just a medium kind of song. Yeah, mid tempo. Yeah, and then got a, it was, got a good chorus to it though. Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, all every single song in this album has a good chorus. There's like not one song that doesn't have a good chorus in this album. That's true. Except for except for follow sign, which is just a bunch of uh, nothing really. 
But uh, the next song is uh, Twilight of the Gods. That speeds it up more. That's one of my favorite Halloween songs. More power metal. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I love this particular song. Uh, great, great drums in this track. Really mm -hmm. driving. Yeah. Yep. Even the vocals and everything is really good on that one. Um, yeah, God. that's probably my favorite song off the album, honestly. Of, of this album, yes. I remember when uh, I first heard this one, because I heard Keepers uh, 2 first. Where is that little sheet I had? So did I, actually. Um, you remember the uh, Doomsday News compilations that Noise used to put out? Yeah, I don't have it, but I've seen them, yeah. Well, Halloween was on uh, the second one with Halloween, and I won out. So mm -hmm. I ended up picking up Keepers 2 first, and that, that was my introduction to that, and that was pretty cool. Yeah. I had a little inside this booklet when I first got this album. I, one of my friends made up a little um, when we were in school. You know, you, you, they used to have the um, uh, what do you the card catalog thing you used to go through to find all like articles and stuff in the library. Oh, the De Dewey Decimal System. Right? Yeah, something like that, whatever. Oh. And they found like a music thing, and then they found there was an actual article about Halloween in there. We thought that was all that was kind of weird in in, the, in our school library. They find something about <laughs> Halloween, like very random. And they sent, gave it to me, but I don't know. It was in this, I had it in this case for years, and it's not there. It's had, it had like a little um, a little story about something. I don't even remember what it was now. Oh, well. Huh. But uh, yeah, Twilight of, Twilight of the Gods. Awesome song. It's, it's very power metal. Yeah. Then, uh, uh, then it slows great. down. What? I was gonna say, great guitar work in that song too. Oh, I yeah. love the solos. Yeah. All the solos are crazy on that song. Did it's not like, like the next track as much. You don't Sorry. like the next one? That, yeah. well, what do you guys think about the live version though? Oh wait, no. They, they, what was the live version they did? Oh no, that was um, we got the right. Is the live is the uh, slow yeah, song on the live one? Right. But they are playing. I think they are playing a tale that wasn't right now during the uh, reunion uh, show oh really yeah I, th I think so i had to look at the set list i'll find out on sunday i mean uh, saturday when they play uh irving plaza oh nice yeah <clears throat> yeah that'll be fun but why don't you like this song a tale that wasn't right uh well the chorus is good yeah <laughs> as with the rest of the album um I just wasn't uh, crazy about them playing slowed down like that. It doesn't doesn't sound right. Doesn't sound fully formed. Yeah, well, coming from Walls of Jericho and coming into this album, the first two songs, uh, actually, first three songs, they kick you in the face and then they hit you with a slow uh, little girly song. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, even so, it's really not a bad song. No, it's not at all. It just, I didn't like it as much as the rest. It turned me off a little bit, but mm -hmm. I listened to it. I didn't skip it. Yeah, it's yeah, got yeah. its good parts. It's just not one I would play very often. And, right. Uh, yeah, no, I don't I don't play that often myself. <clears throat> I don't really need to. It's more about how they try to thread the different parts together, and it doesn't quite gel like it should. But like you were saying, you know, this is their first attempt at it. Not bad. And they definitely got better on the next album i feel oh yeah definitely i think so a huge step up from this one. Oh yeah Although, i like the sound of keepers one better than the keepers two though i think keepers one sounds heavier than keepers two it does you're right the production just in general is a lot better on keepers yeah. one than keepers two i noticed keepers two got they made it like kind of flat almost in a way yeah, no, uh, you, you're right. That's the best way to describe it. It is kind of flat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next is Future World. It's a good, good song. song. Everybody loves loves Future World. That's that's one of their encores. They always play Future World. Yep, that's on that live album. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, yeah, they they've been playing that song forever. They never took it out of the set list, as far as I know. I can see why it's a great song. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why would you take it out? You know, that'd be silly. 
It's just funny though because they have so many albums. I can I don't even know how many. Like I was talking to a guy at work today. And he's like, "Who the hell listens to Halloween? No, nobody even knows them." I'm like, "Get the hell out of here!" Like, he doesn't know. Like, <laughs> he listens to like metal. He like more like hard hard rock kind of stuff. He loves Metallica and he loves Alice in Chains, but uh, you know he doesn't know power metal and all that stuff. So uh, it's funny talking to him about this kind of things because uh, he thinks nobody listens to it besides me. So it's kind of. That's- like, <laughs> but uh yeah future world that's pretty much the similar to uh a little time <clears throat> you know it's just a regular yeah. regular normal pace song whatever and then you got uh, uh which i believe is their first video that they made uh for halloween yep killer Thir- video too. Yeah. 13 minute long song which which doesn't feel like 13 minutes long no, it doesn't. It goes by very fast because it's just, it's constantly going and it's constantly, uh, it's doing one thing and the next minute it's got the chorus and then it's going to another thing and it goes back to the original thing and it goes to this and that. There's so many twists and turns in that song. It's, it's so cool. A lot going I can on. Hurt. <laughs> A lot going on. But when I first saw, when I first saw the video, and it was only, it was edited to like, what, five, four or five minutes or whatever. I'm like, what the hell is this? But yeah, I actually yeah. liked it. I, I did like it a little bit like that. They make it work, but it's nowhere near as good as the full song. No, you have to, you have to definitely hear the full song to enjoy it and, and really get into it. You have to hear the full song. Because it's not, it's not really just about the lyrics and, and the, you know, singing and all stuff. It's also about the music. And there's so many different musical things in this song. It's just, it's crazy. Oh, it just keeps going. It doesn't stop rocking for a second. They just <laughs> Yep. Awesome song. The video's video's weird, but it's it's kinda cool. And then the last track is just a uh what do you call it? A um an outro, outro, outro kind of thing. A little guitar. So that is Keepers One. Good album. I love this album. Uh this is like this it. is oh I love that album. This is kind of hard to do. We can, we have to get into this groove, you know. Yeah, we do. Right. <laughs> well, and with Alice in Chains, it'll be better because I had more time to listen to it. You know, more right. time to think yeah. and write down my thoughts. This, yes, I've heard it before, but it had been years. So, yeah, that's also too. To yeah, right. That's also true because um, you know I've listened to these albums a hundred times, the Halloween stuff. So I don't need to like really listen to them ever again. But um, I had I had all the notes written down for the other show. Everything was all I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, me too. I had a whole thing written down of uh, some um, uh, like history on on the album and stuff like that, and what was recorded and when it was recorded and stuff like that. So I have a li- I'm a little bit more repa- prepared for the other show than this one. This one's kind of just thrown up in the air. Yeah, just like, having fun with it. Yeah, Fuck it. <laughs> yeah. This way, I get used to talking to you a little bit too, because we only talk on on Facebook, so it's kind of hard to, you know, really communicate with each other on on there. Uh, all right. So we have Keepers Two. Keepers Two. I like that cover better <laughs> than the first album. Um. No, no. I, I like this one. It's you got the guy on there, you know, the little mystical guy with the little uh, thing, key, you know, the keys in the in the ball, uh-huh. and then you got this one. It's just a little monster guy grabbing the other guy's hand with a key in it. Yeah, but it's a goblin hand, man. It's green. It's I know. The, one thing that is cool is the uh, the faces in the, uh, in the yeah in the water there. You know, that's that's cool. There was an echo there. I don't know what the hell that was. It threw me off. It was I move? I think it might have been because I moved closer to the microphone to look oh. at that. No, oh. don't do that ever again. I won't. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though. I gotta grab my iced tea real quick because watching you drink your drink has made me very. I I got a drink because my throat gets very dry. <laughs> yeah, my mouth is. I'll be right back. <laughs> so I have to entertain everybody now. Oh. 
I wish I had something to uh, entertain with. I don't have anything. Oh, yeah. I got that big Darth Vader back. I know. I see him. I got to put something behind me. The only thing I got is a, uh, it's this guy. He's a pumpkin. And um, if you touch him, he, he, his uh, face lights up. And it comes on and he, he talks. It scares the shit out of my son. <laughs> but the funny thing is he always wants to come down here and see it. It's a Halloween decoration, so I don't have it out, you know. He's you scared. like being scared. I guess so. And that's kind of good because, uh, you know, he won't be too scared when he watches uh, scary movies, I guess. I try to scare him as much as possible. <laughs> I would, too, if I had kids. Yeah. Yeah, and, and me and my wife is a big uh, horror, horror movie fan. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, I am too a little bit. She's got me into that a lot. So, you know, hopefully he uh likes that stuff. We just saw the um The Strangers Two. Did you ever see those movies? No, I have not yeah. heard of them, but Strangers One was really good. Very good movie. Strangers Two, uh it was good, but not as good as the first one. They I guess they ended the series with the second one. Kind of disappointing. Because they really could have uh, continued it. But if you ever see it, watch it. At least the first one, because the first one's good. I have to check it out. Yeah, definitely. All right. Moving on to Keepers 2. We have another... Um, what do you call these things? Intro. Like, you know, another musical, very musical intro. Uh, kind of similar to Keepers two, uh, Keepers 1. Again, when I first heard that intro, I'm like, holy shit, what the hell? Never heard <laughs> anything like this before. And then uh, and then it kicks off uh, with Eagle Fly Free. And that just blew my mind right there because that song is ridiculous. Between, it is. Between how fast it is and how catchy the verses are, how catchy the chorus is. And then in the middle of it, you got the drum solo and the bass solo and the guitar solo. And the song's only five minutes long. Yep. And they squeeze and, all that, that shit in there. And his voice just soars over top oh of it God. all perfectly on that song. Everything. Oh, that is that is the Halloween song. If you want to listen to Halloween, you have to listen to that song first, I think. I agree. I mean, That one the, and Halloween, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Good starting point. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, second song, You Always Walk Alone. That I actually have a story for. That was um, uh, Michael Kiske uh, when he was in a band before Halloween, uh, Ill Prophecy, they were called. Uh, that song oh, came from that. that huh? I said how clandestine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that song is actually from that band. Oh. So uh, they brought it over to uh, Halloween. And it's I. I I believe it's actually the same song. I don't think they really changed much to it at all. It's been a long time since I listened to it. But from what I remember, it's pretty similar. And uh, that's the weakest song in this whole album. I agree. I think they could have just even actually, maybe just made it a B-side and just gotten rid of that because um, cause there's a, uh, they have a good B-side for this album. Actually, we should have discussed that, too, because there was B-sides for the other album. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Uh, victims uh, the, of the... Uh, actually, yeah, it wasn't the... the it was just... It was just um, Victim of Fate. It was Michael Kiss singing it, yeah. And, uh, so, yeah, so that those B-sides weren't a big deal. But the one uh, for the Keepers, too, was... Um, uh, oh, my God. Uh, Don't Run for Cover. Yes, that is a great song. Yeah, that's a good one. And uh, Savage. Yep, yeah. Yeah, that was another, that's another fast song. Yeah, I'd take either of those in place of... Especially over, <laughs> yeah, over that song, over You Will Always Walk Alone. Yeah. It, it has a good solo section, but the rest of it, the 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 verses and the chorus, it just it, it just sucks. I, I don't like that song. It's the, my least favorite Halloween song. I mean, there's other bad ones, but that, this is my least favorite. Hmm. 
I uh, I remember not liking Chameleon at all when I heard that one. Mm. A lot of people don't. And you haven't listened to it since? Nope. Oh. Well, we'll have to get back to that one then. Okay. <laughs> I, that's actually I one of my remember, uh, Is it really? Yeah, only because it's different. Just like like we were talking yesterday about... Um, what would we talk? We talked about Kiss the Elder. What was the oh, uh, uh, Club Ninja? Yeah, I love Club Ninja. Uh, that's that's Halloween's Club Ninja. That's Halloween's, uh, you know, the Elder Chameleon to me, anyway. It's just it's so different than what they did previous albums and after that. It's just you know, it's just it's cool. It's cool to hear them do something different, you know. Didn't work, but it's still cool, you know. I'll, do, I'll have to check it out. Yeah, you're not gonna like it. <laughs> you won't like it though. <laughs> you definitely Probably won't like not. it. No. My throat is so dry. We have I have a de dehumidifier in here, and it's drying my throat out really bad. Oh my god! And it's also very humid. The the humidity came back for like two days. It's killing me. Yeah, it's bad up here too. Where are you again? I'm in Minneapolis now. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And I'm in New York, just in case anybody wants to know. Long Island. Ah, I thought you lived in Jersey for some reason. No, 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 no. Don't you remember that you sent me CDs? You sent me, we traded uh, Kiss albums, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I uh, sold you some King Diamond records at one point, too. I actually, yes, you did. Yep. I still have them. They're behind cool. me somewhere. Yep. Yeah, it was, uh, what was it, um, them, I think Abigail, right? Yeah, them, Abigail, and maybe uh, Conspiracy? Yeah, yep, that's what it was, yep. Yeah. Still got them, they're not going anywhere. Awesome. Yep. All right, so next would be uh, Rise and Fall, another song people don't tend to like. Really? Uh, yeah. I don't know why. I think it's a pretty fun. It's funny. It's a funny song. It's it's got funny lyrics. It's a catchy. Yeah, song. I thought it was good. Catchy. Yeah. It's definitely catchy. I don't know. Did you ever hear the live version from uh, Live in the UK? Uh a long time ago. Yeah. Wow, I forgot all about that album. Yeah. Well, it's it's basically uh it's the same as I Want Out Live. It just has that song as a bonus track. Oh. Okay. So it's it's the same recording, but. Uh, yeah, that's another one that uh, I like that recording live too. Hmm. It's, a, it's a funny song, and for some reason people hate that song. And I always, I always point to you like you hate that song more than you always walk alone. I think that's the worst song. Like I don't get it at all. Yeah, Rise and Fall is much better than uh, You Will Always Walk Alone. Yeah, way better. And then we have uh, Doctor Steen. Another song that's uh, pretty much like uh, on Keepers One at Future World. Uh, that's uh, yeah. another you know song they play all the time. Never got another set list at all. And uh, did they ever? No, they didn't make a video. I'm thinking of uh, when they did that. Uh, mm -hmm. When they did that album, uh, what the hell's that album? An armed album, and they redid Doctor Steen. They did a video for that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of that. It was on a live video or something, though. I remember seeing a concert video with that song. The only other thing I remember is uh, they were on a TV show. I think it was in Germany or somewhere. And uh, they were supposed to perform the song live. But I guess the TV show, you know how the TV shows they used to have the bands on, but they wouldn't actually be performing their song. They would act right. like they were doing it. Well, that's yeah. kind of like what they got suckered into. And uh, they all, as the song was going on, they switched instruments during the video. <laughs> oh, so that was, that was pretty funny. That's great. So that was cool. But yeah, I love Dr. Steen. Dr. Steen's a good song. A lot of people are getting sick of that song, though, for some reason, I hear. I mean, I can understand why, but... I could see why. It's not as good as some of their other songs. No, but it's 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 a cool song. I like it. Yeah, it's a good solos. Um, there's nothing really bad to say about it. It's just a little bit more average than right. some of their other songs. Yeah. 
Well, I guess it was good enough for a single, though. Right. Yeah, I mean, so far as I know, everybody loves it. <laughs> <laughs> and it can't be too bad if they re-redid it, you know, and uh, a couple years ago when they did that Unarmed album. Right. And I actually like that version, too. The one, uh, did you ever hear that version? No, I uh, I didn't realize they re-recorded anything. I'll have to check that out, too. Yeah, you're, you're definitely going to hate that album. <laughs> <laughs> They picked they picked some cool songs to re, re redo, and um, they really changed them, like a lot. Mm. Eagle, Eagle Fly Free don't sound anything like it does in this album at all. And uh, but it's cool. It, it had there's some cool songs and there's some pretty bad ones that I wish they didn't do. But okay, I'll have to send it to you. You can hear that one. Just like I have to send you the Keeper uh, Three one because you can. Kind of compare, you know? Yeah, see what the uh, see what Andy Darris sounds like. That's his name, right? Andy. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it's another thing. Like Ken kept asking me if we were going to review Keepers Three, but you know, I couldn't have you listen to that because that's I that's didn't a whole never have time. yeah, that, well, that's a whole other world. Like you've never heard that at all. So to uh, review that one would be like it's pointless. Because uh, that's 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 when you got to sit down and actually kind of pay attention to. It's not like these, like these. Even though I guess there's a story to these albums, I don't really understand it. I don't see it until it gets to the song "Keeper of the Seven Keys." Like th these songs don't form a story to me, you know. No, none of it does. The uh, the only other song besides "Keeper of the Seven Keys" that even seems like it could play into the story is Doctor Steen, actually. I could see him being a villain, but that's about it. Yeah, I guess I could. I was also going to say maybe Eagle Fly Free, too. Oh, true. True. Because, you know, Eagle Fly Free, Eagle Flying. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's true. Like, uh, even with the other one, like, there's, there's nothing that really forms any kind of story. And that's, that's what's different, actually, about Keepers 3. There is actually an ongoing story on that album. Okay. So... And the other thing that's weird, too, is with Halloween, when they had the Keepers 3, well, we'll get to that later. Uh, right. They they kind of finished the story on Master of the Rings, like the first uh, song, Soul Survivor, that was kind of like the ending of the Keepers saga, I guess. And then they went on a couple of years later to do the Keepers 3 album, so it's kind of weird. But uh, let's move on to uh, We Got the Right great song it is a great song similar similar to a tale that wasn't right but this one's way better yep yeah it's a another slow song a finished song no right yeah, yeah I definitely. Feel in comparison to the other one uh yeah it's slower um definitely not what halloween usually does but no uh, it comes off great yeah definitely another there's another one too that that uh might actually be a little bit better on the live album. Yeah, I, I do like the live version of it better. They, yeah. uh, well, they don't really experiment with it much, but it uh, uh, it just sounds better. Yeah, definitely. I think so, definitely. It's a good album, good song, good chorus, good verses. You know, typical slow song. At you know, for at that time, typical stuff that everybody else was doing. I guess at that time. Yeah, beats the hell out of bad English, though. Never listened to them. Uh, those are those assholes that did that. Uh, when I see you smile. Oh, God, that's, ter that's, that's why I didn't listen to them. <laughs> that song's terrible. Yes, it is. <laughs> but I do like the Vinnie Vincent Invasion. So. You know what? I... When he just when he just um, came back, I guess a few months ago, I, I looked more into him to find out because I never really bothered listening to his stuff or anything. And then I went on YouTube to go find like a, a song or a video, or whatever he did. And um, I wasn't too crazy about the first album, but the second album when he had Mark Slaughter on it, mm -hmm. that that kind of sounded pretty good to me. But I'm also a fan of Slaughter. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's more slaughter-like, but it's uh, it's just more melodic and uh, 
put together as pop songs than the first album is. Uh, the first album is just an excuse for him to shred on his guitar. Really. I, I was just going to say that. that album I mean, there's, that album yeah, sounds there's a lot more metal uh, from, you know, the, the videos and, and stuff I saw on YouTube. That album seemed a lot oh, more yeah. and, you know, a lot thrashier and stuff like that, too. Yeah, I like that one better. Yeah. But I, I still, I, I really never got into him. And he yeah, wasn't he, he wasn't in Kiss that long anyway, you know? I, was, I don't know why people made such a big deal about him. Probably because he was so weird and reclusive. I don't know. It made a good story. But, yeah, I guess. I mean, he, he flamed out pretty publicly in Kiss with playing those extended solos and walking off stage in the middle of concerts and shit like that. <laughs> really? Oh. Yeah. See, I, 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 I wasn't even into Kiss when he was in the band, so I, I don't even know any of those stories. Yeah, um, I've got a live disc, I think, from the Lick It Up tour, I want to say, British Columbia, Canada. Mm. And... You know, the guitar solo is usually about six, seven minutes long, and they got effects that go with it and shit. He right. plays a 13-minute guitar solo on that. And you <laughs> can hear Gene and Paul and Eric doing cues to try to get them to stop, and he just... <laughs> <laughs> so I can funny. see how that didn't work out. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. You can't go to Kiss and do what you want. You're not the boss. Yeah, you're an employee. Yeah, you, know? you got to do what they say. You got to know what you're getting into. That's funny. That's too funny. And now, God, I wonder how he's going to be now because he hasn't done anything in years. And now he's doing nah. it. Well, we'll see if it happens. I mean, you know, he's pulled stunts similar to this before. Nothing quite is public, but it's usually just to grab money and then he disappears again. So, I mean, he already tried to file a patent that pissed Gene off again. That only took three months. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing something about that. Yeah. Such a weird I mean, I, I still like the guy's guitar playing. Uh, it's unfortunate what happened to him in some respects, but he, he's pretty out there and causes a lot of his own problems. I was just going to say, he probably caused it all himself, so... Yeah. If, if he sh shuts up, plays his guitar, and puts out an album, I'll check it out. But I just don't expect it to ever happen. Nah, <laughs> probably not. Who knows? Uh, we'll see. We'll see if he comes out too as a transgender or whatever. <laughs> yeah, that, Ken, he's got tits. I was like, well, I wasn't really paying attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> How could you miss it? But he always looked weird, you know, so who knows? Yeah. Strange guy. Well, back to Halloween. <laughs> yep, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, another little tidbit about the, uh, the actually, the, is it, maybe it's just the U.S. version. See, there's two different versions of this album. There's one with the bonus track, Save Us, which is, ever since I've heard this album, it's always been on the, you know, it's always been mixed in with the songs. And I, knew, yeah. I never knew it was a bonus track. Especially because why the hell would they put it in the middle of the album? They never put bonus tracks in the middle of the album. No. So and, uh, uh, I never knew it was supposed to be a bonus track until you just said that. Oh, really? Yeah, no. Yeah, I didn't find that out until the, um, you know, when I started collecting Halloween stuff and, and you know finding other albums from like Europe and, and you know Japan and all that stuff. Save Us was never even on the album. Hmm. And I, I always wondered why, and then I found out why. It's just weird to me, too, because it doesn't even say bonus track on it or anything. So just my whole life, I thought it was part of the album. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, so, I, when I, I used to listen to cassette, the cassette, and the cassette, it was always the first song on, on side two. <laughs> why, did, uh, why did it get left off the album in other countries? I have no idea. I, 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 you know what? I should look that up. I, I really have no idea. I think I think later on they um, they put it on. Obviously, because they put it on for the U.S. version. But uh, either way, I think it's an awesome song. Yeah, no, it's a great track. Uh, 
really epic, great sing-along chorus on this one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't know if you ever heard, um, you, you know, Gamma Ray, right? Yeah, I know who they are. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear them do the live version of that, of Save Us? No, I haven't. Yeah, on... Um, it was when it was when Ralph Sheepers was still in the band, and they did uh, the Alive album, Alive '95, I think it is. And uh, on there, they did "Save Us." And actually, he used to—he was, I guess, he was kind of technically almost one of the first singers for Halloween. Hmm. So I, I could imagine how they would have sounded like with him in the band, you know? That'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you ever if you ever hear that that, that live version from Gamma Ray. You know, it's the music sounds exactly the same as the Halloween version, and you hear a different uh, somebody singing it. You know, differently. Okay, but it's uh, yeah, yeah it's cool. It's an awesome song, and I'm surprised they it just never for some reason was originally on the album. And it's it, the other weird thing is too. I don't think it's on the B side either. I have to check. Hmm. I never even I didn't even give a think uh, a thought to even look at that. But uh, yeah, it's it's technically a bonus track. Awesome mm. song, though. Yeah, it is an awesome song. And uh, next is March of Time. <clears throat> that I think is my favorite Halloween song ever. Really? Yeah. Okay. The way it starts off, it's got the drums are you know doing the uh, doing all these fills and stuff like that, and then you got the guitars doing all these you know solo things and then uh right before the song kicks in the guitar does that like uh i don't even know how to describe that but that like squealing like mm -hmm. you know you know like the 80s typical squeal guitar squeal thing yeah. wailing on it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and uh <laughs> and then it kicks in it's like you know to this fast fast song and it's just like holy shit where the hell did that come from and uh you know, then it gets to the verse, and then it's, you know, chills out a little bit, but then it speeds up as it gets into the uh, the chorus again. It's just another song. It just goes from one thing to the other in in a five minute span. Like, how do you do? Yeah, that? they do it great, um, and it's so seamless too. Oh yeah. But, uh, they they know. I mean, they do slow. It does slow down a little bit during that one part, but. Uh, Oh yeah, they once never, it gets to the yeah. uh, right. Once it gets, I think, to the the solo section in the middle somewhere, I think it slows down a little bit, mm -hmm. from what I can remember. But uh, yeah, but it, it, they have it pick right back up again, you know. Yep. Very crazy fast song. One and actually, I think uh, I was talking to my guitarist the other day, and I said, because you know, when we talked about doing uh, this show today, doing a Halloween uh, review. I said, how about doing a Halloween song? And I mentioned this song, and I know how kind of crazy it is, and I, and I know how my friend is about kind of uh, trying to learn songs, because he's not going to get the solos down, which you can anyway when you're doing cover songs, you know? Yeah. You do your own thing. But uh, he was actually up for it, so we'll see what happens. It'll be an interesting thing to do. Huh. See yeah, if I can like even, uh, yeah, see if I can even keep up with the drums, because uh, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> So many crazy things going on in this song. Ingo's like a huge influence on me. So I played these songs. My, when I was learning how to play drums, I played this album over and over and over again. So I know it by heart. But it's just trying to play at that, that speed again. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Got to get to practicing, man. Got to get to practicing. And I got to start doing walking. I got to walk again. But uh, next song is I Want Out, which is actually the video I was playing as the show started. But uh, the only people that saw that is, is me and you because nobody else joined the Twitch show. True. <laughs> uh, gr great song. One of their uh, signature songs for a reason. I oh, think. yeah. Yep. One of my favorites they do that's just really representative of who Halloween is. I mean, all the elements are there in this song. Yeah, definitely. Actually, it's their second video, too, for this album. Um, yeah, great chorus. You know, it's not a fast song, just a normal... It's basically radio-friendly, you know? I don't think it really yeah, it got any radio play, but uh, it's very radio-friendly song for the 80s. 
Oh yeah. I don't think it would really fly now. Probably not. Well, no. maybe on like satellite radio. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, something like that. That's yeah, of course. But you, you're not playing on the regular radio. Although no. they they play Maiden and shit too, so but whatever. But yeah, definitely awesome song. And then we have uh, the final keeper of the seven keys, another thirteen minute song. What do you think about this one? Um, I didn't get the chance to like listen to the lyrics real deep, but uh, I like the structure of it. The instrumentally, it's a great song. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so it's like it's like the Halloween song. You know, it's another one. Just it's it's slow in the beginning it builds up and then it takes you off into like another world i guess it's, it's a great the, uh great epic power metal song it makes me want to listen to more power metal actually which is yeah. a strange thing for me to say but that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well that's fine because i have plenty of power metal metal to uh give you suggestions to listen to we'll get there i'll send you uh, we'll get there metal and all kinds of shit <laughs> yeah that's what i plan on doing with this show you know we all get to pick what we want to hear you know oh yeah but uh yeah definitely just the, the keeper of the seven key song is just uh it's it's even hard to describe it because it's just such an awesome song you have to hear it to like really really get it you know it's just yeah it's 13 minutes of awesomeness really it, it really is. It's it's uh and it's so multifaceted too. I mean, I sorry, my job. Don't uh, let that ever happen again. Tell that job to never text you again during the show. That's very I, rude. I will. You, you know, it's it's a good thing I asked you if it was Eastern time or not, though. Otherwise, I'd have been an hour late. <laughs> That's all right. My actually, my wife's like, "Oh, what do you got to do it so early?" I was like, I was going to do this at like nine o'clock, but then I'd be tired. And, yeah, we could always yeah. push it if we always wanted to. We could always push the time up, you know. True. If it's easier for you or whoever. Well, I usually don't work Wednesdays. Uh, today was sort of an anomaly because we're low on people. Yeah. Anyway, back to Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know how much more time we have left on this thing here. It doesn't say. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It'll say it'll, it'll, it'll give me ten minutes when ten minutes are up. Oh, okay. So it hasn't come up yet. But uh, yeah, keep up the seven keys. The final song. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, thirteen minutes of awesomeness. I mean, you really can't say it better than that. That's just plus. I'm wor working on a very uh, limited uh, living with the album. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yep, I hear you. It's just a uh, great song, great album, Keepers 2. If you don't have it, go buy it. Go buy the first one. You'll definitely love them. There's no way you can't. Even if you're not a power metal fan, I think at least the first three albums, if you're not a power metal fan, you'll, you'll, you'll still like at least some of those songs. You know, there's, uh, well, at least, yeah, all of them are, damn it, thrashy enough, and, uh, <laughs> you know, they got enough traditional uh, metal elements mixed in to uh, really cross over. Yeah. I mean, it's power metal, but uh, not like Ingve Malmsteen type <laughs> crap. No. Although, when Kai left the band, and they got uh, Roland Grappau to uh, fill in. He was actually um, very influenced by Malmsteen. And once, oh. he, once he came into the band, there was a lot of uh, Malmsteen influences on like guitar solos and things like that. So, you know, had a couple of, little in, uh, a couple of his stuff, you know, once they moved on past like uh, a Chameleon and when they came back with uh, Master of the Rings and stuff like that. And, it definitely is some kind of that uh, in the uh, Ingo, uh, not Ingo, uh, Ingve Malmsteen um, influence in there, definitely. 
but in a good way. Not not overly excessive like Ingve is. Like you know, he's soloing for twenty minutes. Yeah, it's like, it's like enough already. You did this on the last song. Let's go. <laughs> yep. While he's wearing his little puffy shirt. Uh, I like him, but it's hard to like him. I met him once in a guitar center down in Florida, and that's about all I really know of him other than I don't really care for his stuff. He's got a couple good songs, but mm. that's about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But he was a prick. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see that. A lot of people say he is, and I can just tell by his interviews, and he seems very, um, very arrogant, I guess would be the word for him. Yeah, he was uh, he was bringing in a guitar to get it repaired, and yeah, first of all, he double parked his Ferrari in the handicap spots out front. <laughs> pretty, pretty fucking ballsy, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, I was talking to the guy at the counter, and there was other people in line behind me, and he just comes up and pushes everybody out of the way, and he's like, "This is what's broken. I need it fixed right now." Oh my god! Just ignores everybody else in the store well it's ingve yeah after he <laughs> left that's what the guy said he's like yeah i hate him but it's ingve malmstein there's not much we can do about it <laughs> yeah just just up the price that's all yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm surprised at that though because i would think he would take care of his own stuff yeah you know i thought the same thing especially the fact that it was a, a guitar center you think he'd at least find a, a more yeah, some, private yeah. luthier or something like that yeah some local guy or something that you know a little mom and pop shop or something not guitar center some 16 year old kid works on it and then you know god knows what they do to it <laughs> that's like my guitarist he's got a problem with his guitar right now and he ain't gonna take it to the guitar center he's got a guy to take it to Right. Hey, yeah, Justin. most people I know do. Holy crap, what is that, a cat? Oh, cupcake, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I saw was this black thing walk across with a tail. It was either Satan or a cat. Yeah, it's a cat. <laughs> <laughs> she wants food. Go feed her. Well, we're still doing this. I can end it because we're done. <laughs> True. I would talk about Bach, but you know what? It's already we've already been doing this for how long? Uh, uh, well, about a half hour, I would almost say. Almost seven thirty, so, yeah, so about a half hour. hour. Yeah. yeah, that's good enough. It's only a little semi show, anyway. Semi intro to uh, hopefully the full show that will be on next week. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I'll have to figure out why my audio wasn't coming through because it worked last time. So I don't know what I did. The only thing I, I noticed, uh, oh, what? I noticed that echo on my end too. Sometimes. Hmm. Strange. The only thing I did different was I hooked up my computer into my interface differently this time. So maybe I'll have to put it back the way it was. I'll play with it later and see what happens. <clears throat> but uh, all right, so that concludes the show. Yeah, I can actually hear the echo. It just echoed, right? Yep. Yes, it did. Yeah, can hear it. <laughs> That's also too. Are you wearing? You're not wearing headphones, right? No. Yeah. That would also. Be, right that now. could. That could be why too. Oh, true, true. I didn't even think of that. Yep. That's why I'm wearing headphones. Gotcha. I thought you just had sensitive ears. No, no, this is so I can hear you loud and clear. Okay, Granny. <laughs> what? <laughs> what, huh? What? What did you say? I'm a queer? What? Fag. Oh, oh, we can't talk like that. <laughs> Not on Twitch. Uh, you can't talk like that on Twitch. We'll be kicked off right away. Really? No, I have no idea. <laughs> I just played a whole... I just played a whole video on Twitch. I mean, we're still on there. I haven't got kicked off yet. But, uh, all right. So that, that concludes. That's, you know, the mini welcome to uh, Rat Salad Review episode. Episode mm. 0.5. Mm. So 
uh, join us next week when hopefully the whole crew is here. We will be, uh, are, we, are we doing 7.30 or 7? Seven? 7. 7. 7's good for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just, I had to work today, so I yeah. couldn't be here yeah. right at 7. But yeah, uh, yeah 7 uh, works. So 7 o'clock, same bad time, same bad channel. And uh, we will be discussing the uh, new Alice in Chains uh, Rain or Fog album. Good album. It is a good album. Can't wait to talk about it, actually. Yeah, I'm. I'm getting excited to talk about that album. Yeah, it's. It really does get uh, better on repeated listens. Yeah, you don't catch everything the first couple times around, but uh, right. Yeah, that's really, actually what uh, one of the other guys, what uh, Ken said yesterday. He wasn't really into it when he first heard it, and I know, I know he's a a pretty big uh, or decent Allison Chains fan, you know. So I was kind yeah. of surprised because he listens to so many weird bands. I don't know if you ever see his list of uh, what he bought, you know. Yeah, he's into some interesting things. He's into a lot of stuff. He's not picky yeah. at all. Nope. <laughs> I'm a little more picky. Me too. But uh, yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> But I like Primus, so, you know. I so do I. I like them, too. They're weird, but I like weird. Me, too. Weird's good. And, uh, well, you, I like so much of Zappa stuff that so many people can't stand. Yeah, I you, know? you sent me something of Zappa to listen to, and I haven't listen, really listened to it yet, but I still have it on the uh, message thing. But, uh, oh. yeah, he's weird. He's, he's maybe a little too weird for me. Oh, I sent you... Um... Uh, the guitar duel between him and Steve Vai from uh, yes, yes. Oh Dragon. yes, I yep, I did watch that. Never mind. Yes, now I remember. Yeah, that's a pretty epic uh, solo there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. This is just he's weird. When did he die? Uh, ninety three. Okay. All right. Huh. Yep. The uh, last thing he did was conduct the classical music album, but uh. He was really, really sick with cancer. So, mm. yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about him. We could do an episode about him one day. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. <clears throat> I don't know how if the other guys liked him, but yeah, that's the whole point of this whole show. So, yeah. No, uh, um, I have to send you that uh, Bewitcher album. I was talking actually, about. I was just, I kept forgetting to tell you. Uh, I actually got an email from um, Shadow Kingdom Records. Yeah. Yeah, they they just got signed to them. Oh, nice. Cool. That must have been what uh, they were talking. I'm friends with some of them on Facebook. And okay. Talking about a new album and whatnot. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I got that email and I saw it. I'm like, oh, shit. The, I wonder if Greg knows. So I went on YouTube to check them out. They're okay. I, that's, a, that's probably something I have to get uh, used to listening to. Yeah. It's, it's definitely speed metal. Yeah, and this guy's got like is a growling little voice, I guess you can call it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, kind of like uh, Venom mixed with Diamond Head a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You could definitely yeah. tell that. Yep. So we'll maybe do that one day too. Well, we got tons of thousands of millions of gajillion albums to do. So. Oh yeah. As long as this show, uh, you know, gets better and better each time, then uh, we'll see. Indeed. All, All right. right. So that's it. So join us next week, the 19th of September. We will do Alice in Chains, Rain or Fog. There will be the full full four of us, Ken, Chad, Greg, myself. And uh, we will be reviewing that album. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed yep. the first episode. And uh, we'll see you hopefully next week. See you then. Say goodbye, Greg. Later. <laughs> you gotta do finger guns. Finger guns? Oh, <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> All right, I'm ending the meeting. Okay. Go feed your cat. I'm going. <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>